maybe you're getting a little older like I am and you find it uncomfortable sitting on the ground or getting up off of the ground after getting down there or maybe you just like being a little bit more comfortable around your campsite while you're out in the woods well I may have something you'd be interested in taking a look at this is the Kilos Gear Outdoor Chair 2.0. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Kilos Gear for sending this chair to me so that I could share it with you. In fact, they sent me this, the Chair 2.0 or Outdoor Chair 2.0, as well as their high back version of this chair. Along with that, they actually sent me extensions that hook to the bottom of the chair to support your legs like a footrest and I'll be showing you that with this chair in a few moments time. All right so what I thought I would do is very briefly just go over some of the key features for the chair then I'll assemble it for you and point out more of the features on the chair and we'll talk about some of its pros and cons. So what I think I will do is I'm going to skip by the dimensions of this chair. Of course all the information I'm going to give you now I will be giving you in in the video description below but uh, I think I'll skip the dimensions just to save a few moments time because as you'll see it's more about does it fit and then anything else so I will start by showing you this and you can see the dimensions on the outside of the bag again they'll be repeated in the video description and a little bit more information about it uh, nice stuff sack ventilated on one side is that necessary? Don't know, but if the chair is wet, yeah, it probably is necessary, or a nice, nice option to have. Inside of this little zippered bag comes the chair, and the chair itself wraps around the leg setup so that it all goes together nicely inside of that bag. So obviously the first thing you have to do is put the legs together so you can put the chair on it. So the chair comes with a small Velcro strap to kind of keep everything organized because as you'll see in a moment, all the bungee cords, the chair wants to assemble itself when you undo it. So it's nice to have that and tied around the outside so that it uh, doesn't start doing it on its own. All right, you can see if you just kind of hold the chair, a lot of it wants to go together. But before I allow it to, there is a few things that I want to show you. Now, it is bungee corded in the sections with the legs so that not only does it hold all the legs together but makes it easy to put together but there is a few of them that have steel cables so they like right here there's a steel cable running through here it's still attached to bungee cords down inside the tube of the uh, aluminum well it is a hard anodized aluminum uh, tubing that's being used for these chairs so I'll put the more specific specs in the video description as I mentioned and it really doesn't take much just a bit of letting the poles all go into place where they're supposed to and that's it so that's the frame of the chair I'm going to speak more to the frame in a few moments time but I think one thing I want to show you right now while I have it in my hands are the feet on the bottom of this so I have a chair that I have used in quite a few videos it's from a company called McKinley which is associated with Atmosphere and Sport Check a Canadian firm similar in design in that there are no plastic uh, joints where everything goes together or hubs where everything goes together it's all done through a heavy aluminum tube thick aluminum tube across here and I really prefer that design we'll talk more about that in a moment so this chair kind of goes together very much the same way but it's those feet right off the top that are different if you can see they have a wide footprint on it and what that uh, has done for me so far is I have not noticed the legs sinking into the earth. Now, I haven't been on snow and I haven't been in mud, but out here in the woods with the duff, quite often I find the legs on my other chair are just small plastic rubber endings and my legs will sink right into the duff here. And if you have watched any of my videos, you'll know one of them uh, was a workaround, how I use some plastic PVC piping to create feet for the body of those legs to stop that from happening well with this it's already designed right into the feet and I really like that plus they give me one extra now these haven't come off yet but if they do there's always well, there was one extra in the bag to replace it with I think I'm gonna have to pull the camera back just a little bit so I can show you putting the body of the chair on the frame 
All right, so I repositioned the camera just a little bit so that you'll be able to see me putting the body of the chair on to the frame. So basically what you have when the frame's assembled like this are four extensions, four post extensions with some rubber caps on the end to protect the material of the body. Let me put that aside because I want to just point out a few features on the body itself and then we'll put it together. So very simple and very much uh, like a lot of the chairs of this style. The way that they go on is in the four corners, there are reinforced little pockets that fit in on over the ends of the posts. What makes this different, at least from the chair that I have, the personal one that I own from McKinley, is that this is much more heavily reinforced. And not only is it more heavily reinforced, but it has a loop of nylon webbing here that I wasn't sure what it was for, but because well, it didn't exist in my other chair, but I'll show you, it does make a lot of sense. So let me just give you a bit of a close up. So there's a hard plastic insert all through the corner here, heavyweight vinyl type material here, and the nylon loop. So let me show assembling this. So for the first two posts, it's not going to make a lot of difference. You can easily get them on. But the way this works is it's got a bit of a spring to it that keeps it, makes it a little bit more challenging as you get the last two of the corners pushed on. Pushed on. And that's what these where these loops come in. They allow you to pull the corner of the chair a little bit away from the post and then fit it on to the last post. So I'm down to the last one, just trying to get my loop on, on my finger. See if I can bring that up a little closer just to demonstrate. So you can see right here in the corner and now it's a little bit of tension and then it goes on and then it is on there very solidly and I really like that. And, uh, you know, okay, so it's brand new. No, well, it's not entirely brand new. I've had it out about a dozen times. So it is starting to break in a little bit, uh, but I haven't noticed any loss of tension across the tension points across the four sides of this so far. However, if it does start to do that over time, then of course, this is why it's nice to have it extra, ta extra taut when you first get it, and it will remain a little bit more taut as time goes on. Okay, so a few features of the chair itself. So it's reinforced in the seat, nice heavy Oxford nylon. It has webbing just under the backs of your legs, webbing on your back, and two holes through here for extra ventilation, and then solid panels here. All in all, there is a lot of ventilation on this chair, which makes it extremely comfortable to sit in for extended periods of time. Maybe a little cool in the winter, but that's okay. Put a little piece of foam or your jacket or something inside of there and uh, you close up the holes along the bottom. Now, one of the things I wanna show you as well, well, okay, one more thing here. There's a pocket on the side. Nice little feature, just an additional thing to have on the side. You can put anything from, I suppose, a little notebook or a beverage or a flashlight or your sunglasses or anything else right in here. So just a nice little extra on the side of the chair. Okay. The construction of the chair, what makes this one a bit different? So as I mentioned a minute ago, it has a single aluminum bar crossbar here and all the leg extensions fit into holes on here. Um, now, most of the other chairs that I've seen in design have plastic joints or hubs here where all the legs fit in. I don't know, I, I can't say that this is the case, but I suspect, I think this is gonna be stronger, more durable over time in that there's no plastic to give way, no plastic to soften up or get hard and cracky with time as it often does, that the aluminum is going to uh, remain uh, stronger over the long term. So that's just my thought on this. And that's one of the things I liked about this Kilos chair my McKinley chair has the same design. Not a lot of the chairs do, even some of the name brand chairs don't. So yeah, okay, so basically, let me just give you a few pieces of information on this chair. I will sit in it to show you how comfortable it is, and then I'll put the leg extension on. So really, all I wanna say, as I mentioned, I'll put all the dimensions and everything in the video description, but basically this chair, while it's in the package, as you saw it, comes in at 980 grams or 2.2 two pounds. Just remember that. I'll, actually, I'll mention it again in a minute. So 2.2 pounds. The capacity that can be for somebody sitting in this chair is 330 pounds or 150 kilograms. Well, uh, I feel uh, I'm well under that weight. 
But one of the things I liked on their website is they demonstrate putting huge weightlifting weights on this chair, stacking it right up to show how much this chair will hold in weight. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I It is a strong enough chair that is going to last for a long time without any uh, ripping or tearing or breaking down in any way. And that's one of the other nice things about this chair. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera again so that I can uh, show you the leg extension as well well as how comfortable it is to sit in. <sighs> if you have not tried one of these chairs, it's it really does make a difference in comfort out here in the woods. Uh, we'll talk about comfort in a second, but uh, let me just show you. This is the leg extension I mentioned a minute ago. It's not something I would have thought of that I might be interested in having. Uh, I'll pass a few comments on it in a minute. It kind of goes together very much like the chair itself does. It has corded legs into, in this case, it does have a, a plastic central piece. It appears to be heavy duty. I'm not, you're not putting a lot of stress on this, so I don't think that's much of an issue. There are two feet and there's the little leg rest. And the leg rest has the same type of heavy duty reinforced pockets to go on these two leg extensions. At first it can take a little bit of work to get it on to the leg extensions. It gets a little easier over time. So you can see that's basically the leg extension itself. Two more features. It has a clamp right here and that clamp is going to uh, snap onto the crossbar, the main structural piece in the chair. But it also has an extendable tube with a fold over. Well, let me bring it up and show it to you a little closer. You can see right here it has an extendable tube and there is the clamp, the fold over clamp. So when you get it to the right extension, you just, uh, I think you can give it a little bit more tension. There, snaps on and there you're at the right, right uh, tension and extension, the length of extension. Let me just put it on the chair. So it just snaps onto the chair like that. Okay, so basically, I'm not sure that's the right leg extension yet, but you can see it right here. Uh, We'll talk about whether or not it's something you might want to carry with you. Uh, for me, when I go out to the woods for the day, I'll probably be leaving this at home. Car camping, yeah, I can see carrying it because the weight and the bulk isn't an issue. And here's my other thought on this. When I first tried it on the chair after it was given to me, I tried to put it right out to my ankles and almost my heels sitting in here thinking like a footrest you would at home. That's where you want your uh, legs to be. You want it to be go out that far. And it does. It just goes out that far for me. But to be honest, I didn't find it all that comfortable. And the more I sat in the chair, the less comfortable I found. Because what was happening is when it was that far out, my knees were starting to hyperextend. And it, like if this was my knee here, I was finding that it was starting to be uncomfortable. Then I figured it out. It should, you don't put it out that far. You actually only put it out far enough that it comes under your calves. So then when your legs lay in the chair, it needs to be a tiny bit further out for me. So now when my legs lay in the chair, they're just below my knees and it does make a big difference in comfort, especially if you're in the chair for any length of time. Uh, you get your feet up a little bit. They, it takes the weight off of them. Oh yeah, you can actually start to feel the extra comfort that it provides to have that. Is that part worth the extra weight to carry in the woods? That's gonna be up to you. I probably won't carry it with me in the woods I will take the chair, we'll talk more about that in a second, but I probably won't take the leg extension too often, but I'll take it car camping for sure. Okay, um, there are just a few things I want to mention about the chair. What I have to do is take the leg rest off and, uh, and then I wanna show you something about it. Okay, so this is not something that is an issue for me right now. I don't know if it's going to be an issue in the future. So far, no problem whatsoever. And the only reason I'm mentioning this is because on my chair, the McKinley one, there is, um, a, it, with that similar design, I started to notice this happening. And basically what it is is, 
as the McKinley one started to get a little older and maybe the frame was starting to bend in or the material on the chair was starting to stretch a little bit, I found that the bottom of the chair was starting to cr touch this, this crossbar. Now, honestly, I didn't think it as uncomfortable, but I just said, oh, okay, over time, the chair will sag. Now, if I sit in the chair right now, I have at least an inch under my butt to the bottom of uh, uh, to that bar, so I'm not even coming close to it. Will it stretch over time so that I'm starting to touch the bar? I can't say. Uh, like I said, this has only been a dozen times or so. I've had this out in the woods, once car camping. So, yeah, it's, it's not an issue. I don't think it'll become an issue. Even with the McKinley chair, where it does occur, it's still not an issue. I just want to point that out as something that may occur. Okay, so there is just a few things I want to talk about this chair or these types of chairs in general before we wrap this video up. So this is a discussion I likely should have had earlier in the video, but I think it's fair to have now as well. And this is, let's talk about carrying a chair at all with you in the woods. I know that there are a number of people who will comment that a carrying a chair like this is just extra weight you don't need to have. Bulk weight in your pack that you could be either eliminating altogether or could be better used for something else. Well, I have a different opinion on that. To me, my comfort is worth the extra weight to carry this with me. This or some other way of sitting off of the ground comfortably while I'm out here. Could be my hammock. If I bring in my hammock for the day or, or an overnight, then a hammock would be just fine for this purpose. I have a hammock chair you've seen me use a lot. That also works. Now, there is some advantages to this over the hammock chair I'll mention in a minute, but getting off of the ground and being comfortable makes all the difference for me out here in the woods. I'm not out here to prove how tough I am or my endurance level for the woods. I'm out here to enjoy myself and to be comfortable, that penalty of weight and bulk, I'm willing to pay. And uh, I know many people are. So I just wanted to have that discussion briefly. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is value for this chair, because there are a great number of these types of small folding camp chairs on the market. And I did a little research and put some prices against them so that uh, it give you some information to work with. So the first off, I should mention this chair. So this chair is selling at uh, $75 Canadian right now. And uh, I did some comparisons that I wanted to bring to you. And the first ones I looked at were the name brand chairs, some of the better known ones, known ones of course. So like Helinox, Helinox Chair Zero. Now, it is lighter than this chair, the Chair Zero is. This is 980 grams, the Helinox is 500 grams, so almost half the weight, but it's also $180. So you have to value, is that, that extra uh, weight savings worth the extra cost for that Helinox Chair Zero? The Helinox Chair 1 comes in at 960 grams, almost identical to this chair, and it's still $160. The Big Agnes Mica Basin is 1.05 kilos, and it sells at $190. I, now, I don't own any of these name brand chairs. I haven't even sat in them, so it'd be unfair for me to say this is a better chair, but bang for buck, I just can't see paying that much for a chair. I still want to be comfortable, and uh, I, this may, actually it doesn't weigh any more than those last two chairs mentioned, that the, at $75, that feels like a much better value. Now, however, there are a few other chairs I think it is important that I mention, and you'll have to do some comparisons to see if it's something you feel that this is still the better chair. I mentioned the McKinley, the one that I purchased myself at Atmosphere here in Halifax, and it comes in at 940 grams and costs $90. Now, occasionally it's on sale, it was on sale when I purchased mine but at retail price 940 grams for $90 a little bit lighter than this one but also more expensive and that's one chair I was able to compare this one directly against and the reason why it's a little bit lighter is 
the tubing all over the chair is a little bit thinner. I'm not going to say that it's not as durable, but it's a little bit lighter. So I am guessing that this is a more heavy duty chair. I know it's rated to carry more weight, this, the, uh, the chair, the outdoor chair from Kilos Gear. So I'd like to think it's just a little bit heavy duty, more heavy duty. Well, now there are two other chairs. Again, I can't comment on their quality but they are quite commonly found on Amazon and that is one from Trekology. It comes in at 900 grams and sells for $50, so a little bit less expensive than this one. And the One Tigris, which comes in at 1.1 kilograms and sells for $70, so a little heavier and just a few dollars less expensive. I want to point out also that those chairs also have that plastic joint piece, the one that I'm, I can't say that it won't last as long. It's just my feeling that this is a stronger, more durable design. All right, I think I've given you a fair amount of information now about this chair. Let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments about the Outdoor Chair 2.0 from Kilos Gear. Um, I'll, I'll, well, let, let me just put it like this. I have retired my McKinley chair in favor of this one. This is the one I'm going to be carrying out in the woods more often now. Um, I think it's a little bit stronger. I think it's a little bit better constructed than my McKinley, McKinley chair. And the other thing I like about this is I don't have to fool with those little pieces that I made to put on the bottom of the McKinley to keep the legs from sinking into the ground. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with my McKinley chair and I intend on keeping that. In fact, uh, Gina has taken kind of ownership of it when we go places now. That's what she wants to use is that one. I think dimensionally, it may be a tiny bit smaller than this one as well, which means that this is is just a little bit better for me and Gina can benefit from having that slightly smaller chair as well. Okay, so I did mention at the beginning that they gave me two chairs. They gave me a high back version of this chair. So I'm going to bring you that under a separate review. And I think that may be the chair where that leg extension makes the most sense. Because the high back chair, while I could put it in my backpack, I'm not likely to. It is bigger, bulkier, and heavier. And where this one serves me so well, I cannot see bringing that one out on, in my backpack. Car camping, that's another thing altogether. And that's in fact what I wait for is I have a car camping trip coming up that I'll record a video re review of that chair. All right, so as I mentioned, all the information for this chair, its physical dimensions, its construction, its materials, its weight capacity, as well as where you can find out more about this chair and purchase a chair will all be in the video description below. I would invite you if you have any comments on this chair or can Camp chairs in general that you can share those through the comment section below as well. All right, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.